Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now, this is a little bit new with the sprites, I know, but <clears throat> I have something very special for you today, and I will be redesigning two of my favorite characters from the video game, Dislight, and that is the Tang twins, Tang Yun and Tang Zon. Issue is, I already have designs for these characters that I've made, but I'll be using these characters for a drawing today and explaining them to you today. I hope y'all are ready for shenanigans, and with that, let's get on to the video. So of course, I had to start with my best of boys, Tang Yun. Now, I was a little unprepared with reference photos, and what I was trying to do, and what I think I did pretty well, was mimic their actual sprite poses from the game. As you can see, Tang Yun is standing in a side profile with his staff behind his back and his braid doing a little swoop and one leg propped up. And that is what I attempted to do. <laughs> I feel like I did pretty well. Uh, the hands were very tricky, which led me to actually, oof, tracing the hands of the actual sprite. Oh, don't, don't do, don't, don't do what I did. <laughs> uh, also, I didn't realize this till later. His head was way too big. <laughs> I, I, I did fix it, I did realize. Allow me to tell you a little bit about Tang Yun, aka the Six-Eared Macaque. Now, not only is the Six-Eared Macaque a funny though inside joke with me and one of my friends, she literally drew a uh, male genitalia with six ears. <laughs> I really hope I don't get demonetized for saying that. But the Six-Eared Macaque is a character from the famous story, Journey to the West. Oh, there's my fix's face. And actually is one of my favorite characters, and he's a favorite for a lot of people thanks to a old animated show that first introduced him. And I don't know the name of the show, I'm very sorry. But recently... He has been portrayed as everyone's little favorite emo boy from the Lego show, Lego Monkey Kid. And he's everyone's favorite little drama club boy. We love him. He, he, good dad. Good dad in show. Well, kind of. Uh, but in Dislight, Tang Yun is our six year macaque. Which, a macaque is actually a real monkey? They're kind of terrifying. <laughs> they are kind of terrifying. I will be honest. But what I love about what they did with his character in one of the skins for him was they made his ears fuzzy. Did they do that with his actual sprite? No, they gave him weird little elf ears that I don't like. And they didn't give him a tail either. Him and his brother do not look monkey-like at all. So I changed that. I gave him a tail. I know their braids were meant to imitate tails, but I didn't like it. Also, I was very tempted to draw Tang Yun with his hair down like I normally do, but I didn't because I wanted to stay true to the sprite. So I, when I do eventually draw his tail, I completely forgot about it. I have it going in the same direction as his braid and his actual sprite, and I have his braid going the opposite direction. I did my best to give his silhouette, like, a very flowy feel, but I don't think I really did the silhouette that much justice, if I'm being honest. I'm very new to this whole silhouette thing, and I'm doing my best. <laughs> I normally draw characters that are meant to be animated, which means they don't have a lot of features. Anyway, let me get to symbolism with the design that I now gave him. Now. Because I, the six-eared macaque is actually a very small character within Journey to the West. He imitates Wukong and then promptly gets killed by him. Yeah. But there is rumor that the six-eared macaque is another trans character. Because I believe they were once a girl. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm going from memory. <laughs> I listened to a podcast called Journey of the Monkey King on um, 
Spotify, not sponsored by the way, <laughs> I'm too small to be sponsored, and that's where I get a lot of my information. The, the, t- the two lovelies who um, do that podcast are very funny, highly suggest, go check them out! Again, Journey of the Monkey King over on Spotify. Now, symbolism. <laughs> there is very much, not that much, symbolism when it comes to his redesign. I made his ears fluffy. I put a little chain on his anklet thingy. I gave him shoes! That bothered me so much that he was barefoot. Oh my god. So I gave him shoes. I gave him cute little flats. I turned his jacket into a not-so-complicated abomination. (laughs) So it fully- it doesn't even zip. It doesn't even zip anymore. It's just open, and it has little slits on the back for his tail. He was meant to have the kanji for moon on the side of his- on the, I guess, breast of his jacket. But that's another detail I forgot, because it's not colored in on the reference sheet. Yeah, I'm kind of an idiot with my own designs, but the moon symbolism was heavily inspired not only by, I believe, Elaine, who is another dislike character. She is actually the goddess Nyx of the night, because her and her sister, I don't remember her sister's name, do look a lot like Tang Yun and Tang Zon with their color palettes and their stories. So my little writer brain was like, Elaine and Tang Yun are on the same side. They're both Shadow Decree members. What if after losing his brother to the good side, Tang Yun kind of clung to Elaine as like a sister? And so I gave him a old version of Elaine's hat that he put his moon fillet on. The moon fillet is something the six year macaque is regularly drawn with. I say regularly, it's not actually that regular. But it is something a lot of people like to draw him with. Because of Sun Wukong having the golden fillet, or the prison fillet. And so I added it to Tang Yun as a parallel to his brother. Oof. Okay. Time to fanboy a little bit, because I'm running out of information to say. (laughs) I am a huge fan of Tang Yun, not only because I love Macaque from Lego Monkey Kid, but just, he's the sweet little emo boy. He's a bit psychotic, I will be honest, but he's just a sweet little emo. I love him. I love characters like him. He's just a little guy. He's just a little guy. (laughs) Oh god, you can tell I've been exposed to TikTok for too long. (laughs) But I did not like his original design. I didn't like the weird bodysuit thing. I didn't like the fact he has elf ears (laughs) and not like animalistic ears. I didn't like the fact he didn't have a tail. I absolutely despised whatever was going on with his jacket. It's like, you got six ears. Put some piercings on. Like, (laughs) I'm not the only one who thinks that. If you look at my sprite, which my sprite is actually inspired by Red Sun or Red Boy and the six-eared macaque. If you notice, my sprite has four ears and a red color palette. And in my intro, I say, Hola, soy rojo, which means, hello, my name's Red. Rough translation. And so my sprite is actually inspired by Red Boy from... Journey to the West, and Red Sun from LMK, Lego Monkey Kid. (laughs) Fun fact, (laughs) my internet persona is Journey to the West based. Because in all honesty, Journey to the West is one of my favorite stories. I don't know why, it's just so interesting. And Dragon Ball fans, go away! (laughs) I, my stepdad, huge ass Dragon Ball fan, Every time I talk about Journey to the West, he's like, Oh, Dragon Ball did this, Dragon Ball did that. It's like, I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. I do not like Dragon Ball. I like anime, not that anime. (laughs) It's repetitive, and I don't like repetitive. Says the person who watches Miraculous Ladybug. I just put... I put baby in a corner. (laughs) Oh my god. Sorry. 
back to Journey to the West, which is actually a little bit repetitive with Tripitaka constantly getting kidnapped and wanting to be consumed. No, wait, he doesn't want to get consumed. Demons wanting con to consume him and kidnapping him or trying to make this Buddhist monk their husband for some reason. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh, the eyes, the eyes, the eyes, the eyes. That's something I completely forgot about. So Tang Yun and Tang Zan both have these little stars in their eyes. But considering I commonly associate six-eared macaque with space, um, I, I don't know why. I think that's another thing that came around with LMK or Lego Monkey Kid. I know there's other things that go by LMK, so I'm going to differentiate each time. But I made his eyes kind of galaxy-like. And in the intro, you can see that uh, when he's mad, his eyes go like full galaxy. And even with the background here, I was trying to interpret a more galaxy feel of the constellations and the glitter. But that is Tang Yun. I rambled. <laughs> now to the one that was definitely more difficult for me to redesign, and that's Tang Zan. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Now, as you can see, my design is on the left, and it has less stuff on it. I took away the extra sleeves on his jacket, made the jacket a little bit more tame. I gave him a tail, of course, um, and I, I, I traced the hands again. <laughs> the hands are so difficult. Oh my god. I added a little less beading on the tail, not tail, braid. I gave him red eyes, red and gold eyes, with a little bit of flame for added effect. I could have put smoke, but I didn't. And I gave him the golden fillet. I gave him shorts. I made his sneakers a little more tame, pointed his ears. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I gave him a little, little earring talisman that I forgot to do on Tang Yun, but his says sun. Tang Yun's was meant to say moon, as I've mentioned before. Also gave him a uh, a compass because why not? I thought it would be funny because it's journey to the west compass. So, and I changed his staff actually. In the game, his staff is just this weird golden pole. I also took away the orbs. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, why are the orbs there? And I made, I actually made his staff look more like the artwork that is shown for Sun Wukong. And also a lot like the staff in Lego Monkey Kid. <laughs> because of course I did. <laughs> so, yeah, it was easier redesigning Tang Yun because I already liked his design. I I never liked Tang Tang Zun's design. Never did. <laughs> but let me get, let me get away. Let me get away from the design and talk about something that in the community of Dislight fans, we kind of collectively all agree on, and that's Tang Zun actually being trans. <laughs> I know I mention it a lot, um, and it does get a little bit annoying. But when I see representation of people similar to myself in media, as I've said before, I'm non-binary, but I do use male pronouns <laughs> because of certain things that have happened in my life that have kind of forced me into a corner. Uh, but I am very comfortable with male pronouns. Commonly use them for myself. But Tang Zon was actually meant to be Tang Mei and a girl. But there was a little bit of miscommunication with the creators and we wound up with Tang Zun. So that, believe, that makes a lot of us think, oh, Tang Zun's trans. And in my continuity, because <laughs> of course I have my own continuity, they are, they, they are. 
and I adore that. <laughs> also, because as I've mentioned before in sketchbook tours, or have you guys have seen in my sketchbook tours, there's a lot of OC and canon character content, because it's not self-shipping, clearly, but they are my characters. <laughs> And I get a lot of- I get connected to stuff like that. Like the OCs and canon character relationships. Um, a lot- I get connected a lot more personally than I do with canon character relationships. Now recently, <laughs> I've been very, very connected with- um, no rage. <laughs> Which, if you have not seen the new Transformers movie, please, please go see it. <laughs> My sister laughed at it. I saw it twice now, and I really like it. It is a Michael Bay film. I don't think he directed it, but he did take part in it. And I... Spoiler alert, Mirage is a character in the film and there's a human named noah uh <laughs> and it's kind of like the bumblebee and charlie situation but with mirage and noah and <laughs> i've just fallen into that loop i absolutely adore them uh i may do a video actually talking about my transformer story in for red because um, and Butterfly Effect, I have two. But, just because it is that close to my heart. Now, <laughs> I got off track with the Transformers stuff. What I wanted- what I was bringing up, the OC and canon character shipping thing, was to tell you guys about my character, Georgia. She is a dislike character that I made, and I believe she was in my previous sketchbook tour. And she's Tangzon's wife. Well, her whole story is that they were high school sweethearts who got married out of high school. They do have a daughter, and they're T for T. I absolutely adore them. Georgia is the Esper of Pantau, or the Immortal Peaches. For those of you who know Journey to the West, and for those who do not, Pantau, or the Immortal Peaches, is what makes Wukong immortal. He eats a whole bunch of them, and he gains, like, triple immortality. Like, I don't know how much immortality this guy has- this guy has now. But the peach- the, the Pantau thing kind of makes Georgia, like, <laughs> invincible? Like, she can still get sick. It's just- she's pretty much just a barrier. She, nothing can harm her. <laughs> she is invincible. She's not immortal just invincible and i i really liked her and tang yun's relationship in my mind my was that a chicken that was a chicken <laughs> the chicken screaming oh my god but yes i i like their relationship now i am getting a little bit off topic talking about OCs and stuff I want to talk about the thing that's happening on screen right now his eyes because there's very specific reasons for the fire elements that I've added to um not only the background that you'll see very soon once I'm done but with his eyes and again people who do and do not know here's a reminder or just be telling you in Journey to the West Wu Kong as punishment was put into a brazier and the smoke from the brazier stained like burned his eyes permanently red from the smoke and so I gave that to Tang Sun <laughs> that's also why I added the little fire details kind of because it's Sun Wukong in a lot of iter iterations one specific adaptation of Sun Wukong, he is depicted as 
not just a stone monkey, but he's kind of like made of molten lava. And he's a lot of it, depictions of him have that fire. The like the, the, the fire. <laughs> and just like with the six-eared macaque, who is commonly depicted as like shadows. The sun always casts a shadow. Wah! <laughs> Symbolism. <laughs> I'm very tired. I've <laughs> been working on this video for like two days now. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got. We'll talk a little bit about um, a new chapter in Dislight. And that's Sea of Sorrow. I haven't played Sea of Sorrow. <laughs> but <laughs> I am aware Te Teng Zon's like kind of the main character. And we got the, the new girl. The centipede lady. As I call her. Because uh, I thought... When, when I saw her, I immediately thought of the weird centipede demon lady from... Oh, what is it called? It's a really old anime. Inuasha? Is that how you pronounce it? Inuasha? I think that's how you pronounce it. Yell at me in the comments. <laughs> but she reminded me of the centipede lady. And I'm actually not an Inuasha fan. <laughs> because of that centipede lady. She scares the living crap out of me as a kid. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. I am immediately disowning this concept and leaving i'm hitting my bed which is right next to my desk but can you guess which one i'm sitting on the bed anyway this is done you can see me playing with a fire tool procreate has so graciously given me and there he is there's the boy all done now i know these designs were a little bit weird all honestly, I'm not that proud of them. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for... Doo -doo -doo -doo, a full-on character design video that I have planned since the beginning of my channel. No spoilers for what that is. Just know I will be creating characters from scratch. <laughs> and not...